Wherever you live, you should be proud of the city you call home. Hi, I'm Tony Brooks with the director of the Wilkes-Barre Preservation Society and curator of the Zebulon Butler House Museum. And welcome to Diamond City Trail of History, a series of architectural and social histories tours of Wilkes-Barre. Today we're gonna to explore the Stegmeyers, their brewery, their mansions, their churches, the philanthropy that they spread around the city and the lives and times of their era. Charles Stegmaier was born in 1821 in Bavaria. 21 years old, he immigrates to New York, moves to Philadelphia, and he starts taking up the business of being a brewer. Trying to find himself in the right type of opportunity and a brewery to work for, he brings himself to Wilkesbury in 1851 and works with uh, John Riker and starts a brewery called Riker and Stegmaier. They work for a few years together, and then uh, as Charles Stegmaier breaks off that partnership and starts a partner, another partnership with Bear. And Bear and Stegmaier brews the beer starting in 1857. Charles Stegmaier was the first to bring lager beer to Wilkes-Barre. And his first breweries were over on Water Street by the Wilkes-Barre City Cemetery. Later, he had a brewery on North River Street at Union Street, and then moves to this location in the 1880s because it was so perfect to dig into the mountain where it was cold to store the beer. In 1875, Charles Stegmaier lost his business. He lost his house, was evicted. He lost his hotel, which was here on the corner of Market Street and Wilkesbury Boulevard, and he lost his brewery. But two years later, he's back in business and he expands and grows to become the third largest brewery in Pennsylvania. This magnificent brick Victorian structure was designed by a Philadelphia architect named A.C. Wagner in 1890. And over the years, Charles Stegmaier grew his business to become the third largest brewery in the state of Pennsylvania. Charles Stegmaier became an extremely generous man to Wilkes-Barre. He helped build St. Nicholas Church, where we will tour later. He paid for the clock in St. Nicholas and the stained glass windows behind the altar. He's buried in a magnificent mausoleum in Hollenbach Cemetery, and he dies in 1906, leaving to his children $4 million equivalent to over a hundred million dollars today. Stegmaier brewed their beer until 1974 when this building then laid dormant, oh, for about 20 years. It was a great battle fought by historic preservationists and a great success for preservation in Wilkes-Barre when it was saved by the federal government and turned into a federal office building today. If you ever want to know the ethnic makeup of a neighborhood, look to its churches. In the South Washington Street neighborhood in Wilkes-Barre, you will find a German Roman Catholic Church, a German Lutheran Church, and a half a block away, a German Jewish synagogue. Hence, this neighborhood was German. And it was to this neighborhood that Charles Stegmaier would move in 1851. The Germans and the Irish got into a little tuffle over their churches and St. Mary's up the street had a small German component to it and by 1855 those German families broke away from St. Mary's and hence St. Nicholas German Roman Catholic Parish was born. The church behind me was designed by New York architect William Schuckel and was built in 1887. It is designed in the high Victorian Gothic style, probably the best example of high Victorian Gothic architecture in Wilkes-Barre. It is made in Laurel Run Redstone, a building material that is very prominent that you will see in other churches in Wilkesbury and also around the foundations of many houses in Wilkesbury as a mitigation to floods. Charles Stegmaier was very generous to St. Nick's and when Monsignor Nagel commissioned to have this church, his parishioners decided to give a dollar fifty a month for 50 months. And $80,000 later, St. Nicholas Church opened up and its church bells rang in 1887. Charles Stegmaier paid for the wonderful clock that you see in the tower, a 190 foot tall steeple that is the tallest steeple in all of Wilkesbury still to this day. Charles Stegmaier also paid for the Holy Family stained glass window that is behind its altar. He was very generous to this church 
1906, when he died, the newspapers say he had the largest funeral to date in Wilkes-Barre. So now let's take a look at some of the homes that Charles' sons built. Two beautiful mansions down on South Franklin Street. The marriage between Charles and Catherine Stegmeier produced six children, all very active members of Wilkes-Barre society. One of their sons, Frederick Stegmeier, lived in this wonderful second empire style house at the corner of Ross Street and Franklin in downtown Wilkes-Barre. Designed in 1876 as a joint project between Missouri Haupt and the famous social architect Bruce Price, Missouri Haupt had it built for himself. He was also a, a, a contractor that built other projects around Wilkes-Barre, most notably the old armory on South Main Street. Frederick Stegmeier lived here until his death in 1915. It is a perfectly wonderful second empire style house. The indicative style of Second Empire is a mansard roof, and if you look along the third floor, you'll see a very steep roof as that style was emulated from uh, Parisian architecture from the 1870s and 1880s post-Civil War. One interesting fact about a lot of the mansions that are in downtown Wilkes-Barre is they all at one time had porches. Back in the days when people would sit on their porch and talk to their neighbors, carriages and horses would go down South Franklin Street. As the car got invented and more cars became popular in Wilkes-Barre, people would move to the backyard and take away their porch. The Frederick Stegmeier Mansion did that such thing and the porch was removed. And then when Joe Matteo bought that house, he meticulously restored the original porch. It was kind of a beat up old apartment building and he turned it into a magnificent bed and breakfast, one that also could be rented out for charity events around town. There have been many wonderful wedding receptions here too. And you can stay here at the bed and breakfast anytime when you come to Wilkes-Barre. One of the events that was recently held here was a birthday party for Zebulon Butler, his 289th birthday to be exact. It was a fundraiser for the Wilkes-Barre Preservation Society to raise monies to restore Zebulon Butler's homestead over on South River Street. It's interesting that Wilkes-Barre has two Stegmeier mansions on South Franklin Street. So now let's take a walk up the street to the Mary Stegmeier mansion. Of all the children that Charles Stegmeier had, George Stegmeier was probably the most involved in Wilkes-Barre. Served as chief of the fire department, was with the fire department for 16 years, served in the state house of representatives in Harrisburg, and was also elected by city council to be the treasurer for the city of Wilkes-Barre. He was the vice president of the Stegmeyer Brewery Company, also served on the board of directors of the First National Bank of Wilkes-Barre, and was president of the board of directors of Mercy Hospital, where they were very generous contributors in building that hospital. George Stegmeyer married Mary Costello, and together they built this wonderful house here at 156 South Franklin Street. So a house that beer built, and their next door neighbor, Fred Weckeser's house, was built by Nickels and Dimes from the Woolworth Corporation. The house was designed by the Wilkes-Barre Architects firm of Knapp and Boswick, and it was designed in the colonial revival style and built in 1911. The very interesting story about it is George paid for this house to be built and he never got to live in it. His wife Mary lived here for her entire life and then donated the house to the American Red Cross at the dawn of World War II. Colonial Revival architecture was extremely popular in the years leading up to the sesquicentennial of the American Revolution in 1928. You'll see very many buildings copying the design of Independence Hall in Philadelphia, particularly when it came to, say, college campuses. Great example is the main hall at Bloomsburg University. So you'll see a lot of colonial revival architecture throughout the teens and 20s throughout America. And Wilkes-Barre is no different with this wonderful 1911 built house. Since George Stegmaier never got to live in this house, we can go to his final resting place in Hollaback Cemetery. So here we are now with the final resting place of Charles Stegmeier and his family in Hollenbach Cemetery, a beautiful Victorian city of the dead that was donated by George Hollenbach and created in 1855. A magnificent cemetery with about 16,000 bodies 
uh, buried in today. And today it probably has one to two burials uh, a year. So it's practically filled. If you look around this cemetery, you will see all the street names of Wooksbury, Dana Street to Hollenbach, all the famous people who were the builders and movers and shakers uh, of this wonderful city of ours. And this is where George Stegmeier, Fred Stegmeier, Charles Stegmeier, Louisa, Ted, all the extended family um, is buried today. Charles Stegmeier must have put a fortune into the mausoleum that his family has. There's room for 20 caskets. And in my recollection, I think there's room for three more left. <laughs> so here it is, the mausoleum for Charles Stegmeier and his family, a great Greek temple that was built uh, in 1906 for Charles Stegmeier. We happen to have the keys to the mausoleum and I invite you inside that you can see uh, how he's been laid to rest. When Charles died in 1906, by the way, he had the largest funeral in Wilkesbury at the time. He uh, was moved to his house, his final resting place. Um, he actually died in Los Angeles where he was living. They brought him back home to his house on North Washington Street where the new section of Coughlin High School is, the 1957 section of Coughlin High School is where George, I'm sorry, where uh, Charles and then his son George uh, Stegmeier lived. It was there they was laid to rest and a huge procession went down Washington Street to St. Nicholas Church and then had the funeral and then they wrapped around Wilkesbury to come here to this mausoleum. So here we are the final resting place of Charles Stegmeier and his wife, Catherine Baer, buried here in 1906. And the various children of Charles and Catherine, there was daughter Louisa, Fred, Christian, George, and all the various children of, of George and Fred uh, buried here as well. It's a very fitting place for a, for a eminent Wilkesbarian who gave so much to our town. And it's a wonderful place to have him rest for eternity. Hey, I hope you like this series on Stegmeier and I hope you really like the videos and want to see more. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to contribute to the Wilkesbury Preservation Society, help us restore the Xavier Butler House Museum and make more of these videos, please contribute. See the link below. Thank you.